Shalom, peace and blessings, peace and blessings. It's Martha Messenger. We're back in our video. This is a well-requested video. A lot of people have no idea they're engaging in satanic holidays, pagan holidays, because they've been programmed by uh, the churches, their family, their friends, the media, the world, pretty much. Remember, the world has no truth in them, okay? To celebrate things like Halloween, Easter, Christmas, Valentine's Day, Thanksgiving, Mother's Day, Father's Day. I know some people are saying, well, Mark, Father's Day, Mother's Day, really? I want to explain about this video, okay? And I also have God's Holy Days. For those who don't know, God's name in Hebrew is Yahweh. So I put Yah, okay? Because this is, this is all about being set apart. Now, if you call God, God or Yah, okay, it's all good. I'm not, I don't have that religious spirit to condemn people for using, you know, what name you want to use, okay? Um, so before we start this video, Remember, God says to be holy, be set apart, even as I am set apart in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 15, okay? A lot of people, they're religious. Even though God doesn't instruct anybody to be religious, he, he instructs you to be holy, to be set apart, okay? And a lot of people are not partaking in these holy days that God has for us. And see, a lot of people think celebrating the Sabbath day, you know, the holy days I'm going to go over, right? They think that's bondage. But what this actually does is it keeps your mind centered on him, okay? And, and I'm going to go in because, see, they don't teach us. How come I never knew about the Sabbath day at church, the Christian church? I didn't know about the day of atonement. I didn't know about the Passover. I didn't know who the true, who the real children of Israel are. I didn't know that. I didn't, they didn't teach me that in the church. That's why the Bible says we must study to show ourselves approved. You can't blame the, the pastor. You can't blame them. You got to blame yourself because we all have our own Bible we could read at the end of the day or at when the church service ends, you know, it's up to you to put in the works. It's up to you to study. Okay. It's up to you to research and to understand some of the things that we did. We had no idea. And see, the Bible says that Satan deceives the entire earth. Okay. He deceives us with these holidays. To think that Jesus' birthday is on Christmas, nowhere in the scriptures, okay? But the Bible does condemn you building up a tree. I'm going to talk about that. Ooh, I'm going in, man. If you guys haven't already, make sure you guys smash the like button. Make sure you guys subscribe to the channel. I know many people won't smash the like button because I'm going against their programming. A lot of people are preparing to celebrate these holidays, okay? So I'm going to go over the most highest holy days, okay? Let's go over this first, and I'll go over the pagan holidays next. Okay, then the first thing first is a Sabbath day, okay? Uh, the Sabbath day is a day of rest. The Sabbath, God, when God created the earth, even he took a day off, okay? Even he took, and that's on the seventh day of the week, which is Saturday. Now, you have the self-righteous Hebrews who, you know, it's on Wednesday, it's on Thursday. Man, we're living in Babylon. This is a land of confusion, okay? The other nations think it's on Sunday, but the true Sabbath day, the, when you look in our calendar, the, the one that they gave us, okay? It's on the seventh day of the week, which is on Saturday. What did this world do on Saturday? They go clubbing. They, you know, they party, turn up. The day is actually supposed to be set apart to be resting. Okay, that's when everyone's turning up. Okay, so this is in Hebrews chapter. And I made sure to go with the New Testament verse, which talks about the Sabbath day. Because a lot of people, they use um, that verse in Col uh, Colossians chapter 2, verse 16 to 17. They think that means that you don't have to keep the Sabbath day no more. But what Paul is actually telling people, it says, let no man judge you for keeping the Sabbath day. Why would Paul tell people not to keep the Sabbath day when he was keeping it? That verse means that people love to use that verse. It means that don't let no one judge you for keeping God's uh, laws. No, don't let no one judge you for keep, keeping the Sabbath. People use that to make it seem like you don't have to keep the Sabbath no more. Check this out. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 9, uh, 9 to 12. There remain, therefore, a rest to the people of God. For he that enter into rest, he also has keys from his own works, as God did from his. Okay, let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest. At least any man fall after this, the same example of unbelief. Okay, this is in Hebrews. This is in the New Testament because some people don't believe in the old, uh, new, uh, they only believe in the New Testament. Okay, check this out. Verse 12, it says, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing, uh, piercing even to the diviner asunder of the soul and the spirit, and then the joints and marrow, and is the discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Oh, okay. So the Sabbath day, that's on the seventh day of the week, a day of rest, a day of no working, okay, no buying, no selling. Um, no buying, no selling, no working, and uh, uh, no laboring, and no cooking. No cooking. Now, if you want to cook, uh, have it prepared. That's why they call it the prep day, the day before the Sabbath, to have everything ready. Okay, The Sabbath is on Friday sundown to Saturday sundown. I already have like a 13, 15-minute video talking about that. So if you guys want to look it up, mark the messenger, Sabbath day. Okay, next one up will be the day of atonement. This day just passed. Okay. And this this is why I understand why God has he, he, his holy days. Okay, I understand now why, because it's all to keep your mind centered on him. The day of atonement is a day 
of where you're fasting, okay? It's just a day of afflicting your souls. It talks about that in Leviticus chapter 23, verse 27, the day to afflict your soul. So it's not only like a water fast, it's a dry fast. Because when you're afflicting your soul, that means you're, you're fully giving up the flesh. Even if you guys are married, you're not even supposed to have sex on that day, okay? So no sex, uh, no water, no food. Uh, now, if you have medical conditions, okay, consult your doctor. I'm not a doctor. I got to say that to make it be very clear. But that's what the day of enjoyment is. Afflict your soul to do dry fasting. No sex, uh, no working, nothing like that, okay? And also a day of repentance too. Like what I like to do on the, the day of enjoyment is write down like sins that I'm struggling with and uh, repent out, of course, repent from it. But, you know, what can I do to fight some certain things off, okay? So the day of enjoyment, it just passed. Uh, some people are still celebrating it. Now, if it's for one day. It's, uh, let's actually read this for you guys. This is in Leviticus chapter 23, verse 27. It says, also the 10th day of the seventh month, there shall be a day of atonement. It shall be a holy uh, congregation unto you. Hopefully I'm saying that right. And you shall afflict your souls and offer and an offer made by the fire unto the Lord. Okay, so afflicting your souls. That's why I said you're not supposed to have sex with your, uh, your spouse. Okay, next one up is a Passover. This should be the actual day, you know, which Easter, which is a pagan holiday, but this is what people should be actually celebrating, okay? The Passover. What is the Passover? Okay, this is Leviticus chapter 23, verse 5. It says, in the 14th day of the first month, at even it is the Lord's Passover, okay? So the Passover is a rem is a remembrance of, you know, when the Israelites passed in Egypt, okay? Passed in Egypt, and it was for seven days. And in, that, in those days, they ate lamb, which I don't understand why, you know, you have some Christians telling you, uh, or some Hebrews telling you too as well that um, we're supposed to be vegan, which is not true because even our ancestors were eating meat. They ate lamb. Okay, so if you want to be vegan, that's cool, but don't be telling people not to, you know, not to eat meat because it's going to you're going to go to hell. You have some people saying that, like <laughs> it's just crazy. Okay, so consuming lamb on that day um, is just remember remembrance of what your uh, what God did to our ancestors. Okay. Um, and you don't have to be a Hebrew or a Jew to celebrate these things. It is, it, you don't have to, okay? I know some people might believe that. And also, um, like I said, guys, all this does, guys, it keeps your mind centered on God, okay? That's a, that's a beautiful thing. That's what we should be having our minds too. Not not this type of stuff, okay? So that's what the pastors are for is for seven days. Some people say it's eight days. For me, I just keep seven days, okay? Next one up is a Feast of Trumpets, okay? Let's read this verse. This is in Leviticus chapter 23. It's at uh, 23, 25. I thought I already had it saved. All right, whatever. All right, 23, 23. Okay, so the Feast of Trumpets. So it says... Um, speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, in the first day of the month, you shall have a Sabbath and a memorial blowing of trumpets and, and holy convocation. You shall do no work therein, but you shall offer you shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, And also on the tenth day of the seventh month, there shall be a day of atonement, and it shall be a holy convocation unto you, and you shall afflict your souls. I already read that. But anyways, okay, so... The Feast of the Trumpets is a day, pretty much a day of repentance, okay? Day, and notice how I said all these days, it all simply, it all goes back into repenting, folk, uh, keeping your mind on the Most High, okay? What he did to your ancestors, what he did in the past, uh, what, you know, e even, uh, you know, and see, I understand a lot of people when it comes to Christmas, they want to, they want to use that as, you know, what, you know, Jesus' birthday and stuff like that. But guys, we want to be followers of the truth, okay? Nowhere in the scriptures, nowhere in the Bible does it state Jesus' birthday, nowhere, I don't know how Satan fooled the entire earth to make people believe that this is the day of uh, the day that Jesus was born. I don't know how. You know, I understand how because he's a prince. He's a god of this uh, earth. Okay, so he could easily fool and deceive people by using the media to program and push that narrative. Okay, so that's what the future trumpets is pretty much symbolism for is uh, to repent. Okay, uh, okay. Next one up is a tabernacle, and this is right after the atonement. Okay, so. Uh, this is in Leviticus chapter. This is going to be a long uh, verse, but um says, uh, so this is uh, Leviticus chapter 23, verse 33, uh, 34 to 38. Okay, so it says, speaking to the children of Israel, saying, the 15th day of the seventh month shall be a feast of tabernacles for seven days unto the Lord. On the first day shall be a holy congregation. You shall do no work therein. So a lot of this stuff to you guys before I go on is to, to, to stop working. Okay, so just for a day or... Um, uh, or Passover seven days. So it's pretty much no working. And it's, it's, what that does 
is that it helps you keep your mind on him. You don't have to worry about how am I going to pay my bills. Guys, if you're honoring God's commandments, his laws, and you're being obedient, you don't have to worry about how am I going to pay my bills. God will have that covered for you. So you don't want to have a carnal mind when it comes to keeping God's holy days. Okay. Seven days shall you uh, make an offering made by fire unto the Lord. On the eighth day shall be a holy congregation unto you, and you shall uh, offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. It is a, it is a, a solemn assembly that you shall do no work therein. Okay. These are the feasts of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be a holy congregation to offer an offering made by fire unto to the Lord, a burnt offering and a meat offering, a sacrifice and drink offerings, everything upon this day. Okay. So that's what it's really about, guys. It's all about it. So uh, check this out. So this is in verse uh, 42 to 44. It says, ye shall dwell in booths seven days and all the Israelites born shall dwell in booths and that your generation may know that I that I made the children of Israel to dwell in booths when I brought them out of the land of Egypt, and I am the Lord your God. And Moses declared to the children of Israel, feast to the Lord. So, yes, you guys dwell in, t in tents. And see, so understand this, that God dwells in our temple. Okay. So God, God, so that's why God wants us, you know, to, you know, actually get a tent. That's what our ancestors were doing, believe it or not. Okay. That's in the scriptures. Okay. To get a tent, to stay there for seven days. I can't wait to do that, guys, to have my family, um, you know, most high willing, who, you know, who knows. Because, you know, we're in, we're in the days where who knows what could happen. But um, just to remember, my ancestors used to do that. Okay. Now, like I said, guys, are you going to go to hell for not getting a tent and keeping the Passover? Uh, are you going to miss out on your blessings? Guys, no, you won't. But like I said, these are just things that they don't teach us. They don't teach us about the true holy days. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, check. Any, but when you get judged by God by keeping, you know, staying to holidays, these pagan holidays, yes, you will. Okay. Now, if you don't know, like if the people who don't watch this video, the people who are unaware, they won't be judged. But if you're watching these type of videos, this type of content, and you're still partaking in this, yes, God's going to judge you. Okay. Uh, next one up is a feast of the unleavened bread. Okay. And best believe, guys, in the New Testament, they were actually keeping uh, Paul and all of them. They were all, all keeping these days. Okay. This is in 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Or, sorry, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 5, verse 8. It says, uh, therefore, let's keep the feast. Okay, so yes, they were keeping the feast days. Okay, therefore let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but the leaven, the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Okay, so this is um, Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 3. It says that thou shalt eat no leavened bread with it. Seven days shalt thou eat unleavened bread therein, even the bread of affliction, for thou came forth out of the land of Egypt in haste. That they may remember the day when that came forth out of the land of Egypt, all the days of the life. So the Passover and the, and the feast of leaving, unleavened bread, all to remember what God did to our ancestors uh, in Egypt when He, you know, helped um, them escape the, the the oppressors. Okay, so that's what it's all about, guys. All to keep your mind in remembrance. That's what really what God's holy days are for. Okay, Satan's holidays. Let's talk about Satan's holidays now. Okay, Halloween. A lot of people are unaware. Now this is kind of obvious but i mean some some christians just have itching ears some they're not many are called fewer chosen so but if you actually do your research on halloween what they did back in the days they would um i don't want to trigger any algorithms but they would force people to have uh intercourse with them the r word r-a-p e okay they would do that right and uh with young children that's what they used to do guys and now we celebrate it just so you know, oh, we're just doing it. We're just doing it for um, uh, just to pass out candy. Oh, my, my children just want to, you know, have some candy. If you, want, you guys want your children to have candy, go to the store and buy them candy. You got to be careful who you're giving out candy to. You have witches who put spells on these candy and you are giving to giving it to the children. You have every, guys, every year on Halloween, there's always incidents where people put um, some crazy stuff in, in, the, in their in the candy box every year. Okay. So be very cautious. And I would not... Uh, I mean, be very cautious. Don't even celebrate all of them, guys. Don't have your lights on. Don't get your pumpkin. The Bible says in the Ephesians, one, first Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22, abstain from all evil appearance. Guys, Halloween is evil. You have people dressing up as witches, warlocks, demons. You know, the whole world seems to be on demon time. You have people dressing up as Satan himself. A lot of people back in the days, you had a lot of, I mean, I remember back, because I used, to, I used to go to those parties when I was younger. Uh, a, lot, a lot of these females dressing up as Satan. Okay, all the, they love, it's like they love them. <laughs> they, they, man, it's crazy, okay? It's crazy. All right, so that's kind of self-explanatory. Halloween, the next one up is Easter. And people are unaware that bunnies do not even lay eggs, guys. If you actually do your research, bunnies don't even lay eggs. And let's look at the, let's look at the origins. Let's look at the origins of Easter. 
All you have to do, guys, is type in on, on Google, is Easter a pagan holiday? The, it'll, it'll show you, okay? But people don't do their research. People just see what everyone else is doing like a sheep. And okay, I'm going to just follow, you know? But the Bible says the blind lead the blind, all shall fall into the ditch, okay? So this is, so Ishakar, Easter is actually, uh, the God is actually, you're actually celebrating pagan gods, guys. Yes, okay? It's called Ishtar. Okay, so it says, Easter was originally the celebration of Ishtar, the Assyrian and Babylonian god, godless, or sorry, goddess of fertility, fertility and sex. Her symbols, like the egg and the bunny, were and still the fertility of, and sex symbols. Or did you actually think eggs and bunnies had anything to do with the resurrection? What does eggs and bunnies have anything to do with Jesus' resurrection? Nothing. <laughs> okay, so you see all the same fools of people? All right, let's check this out. After Constancy decided to Christianize the empire, Easter was changed to represent Jesus. But its roots, Easter, which is now how you pro pronounce Ishtar, is all is all about celebrating fertility and sex. Yes, pay. guys, this is Babylon. There's nothing new under the sun. They were back in Babylon days, guys. They were celebrating uh, Easter. It wasn't because of Jesus. Now they just kept the roots because they they link to linked it to be Christians. They linked it to the resurrection, which has nothing to do with the resurrection. Okay. And I know a lot of people are going to get offended because that's what the truth does, okay? So always understand, guys, When it, if you guys want to actually celebrate, you know, if you guys want to actually, I don't want to say Easter, but you actually want to celebrate something that's similar to that, it will be the Passover, okay? The Passover. Now, this is actually for seven days. I know some people say eight days, but for me, when I read the Bible, it said, I don't know how people got eight. All right, next one up is Christmas, okay? Yes, guys, I don't understand. I don't, I understand because Satan sees the entire earth, but... Where in the Bible, guys, like I said, guys, I'll give someone a thousand dollars. Now, I'll take this back. I'll give someone 10 racks. If you could tell me, you could show me a Bible verse where it shows Jesus's birthday. It does not. I read the Bible multiple times from front to back. It does not show Jesus's birthday, but they just gave us a date and people are simple minded. They don't do their research. The Bible says that the simple believe every word, but the prudent, the wise do. Uh, the, 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 the prudent. OK, so let me, let me read that real quick. So it says the foolish believe. Oh, sorry. The simple. The simple, okay, my fault. I want to make sure I say this right. All right, Proverbs chapter 14, verse 15 says, the simple believe every word, but the prudent man look well to his going. So the prudent, the wise, he does. He takes his time to research. He takes his time to study to make sure what he's doing, you know, correlates with the Bible, okay? And uh, let's go look Let's go look at this, guys. Okay, this is in Jeremiah chapter uh, two. I left it right here. Jeremiah chapter 10, verse, chapter 10, verse two to four, okay? Thus said the Lord, thus said the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. For the heathen are dismayed at them, for the custom of the people are vain. For one cut it out of a tree, the force, the work of the hands of man. Okay, the works of the workman, sorry, sorry, the hands the hands of the workman with the axe. What do we what do people do, guys, when they get the Christmas tree? They go cut a tree, right? They get a tree and they cut it when the forest. Doesn't this talk about this? For the custom of the people are vain. They do that on Christmas. There's nothing new under the sun. Check this out. Verse 4. They decked it with silver silver and with gold. People got a Christmas tree and they decorate it with silver and gold, right? Wow. There's nothing new under the sun. They fasten it with nails and with ha hammers that, that it moved not. Wow. Wow. There is nothing new under the sun. Okay. So, yes, we're not supposed to be putting up Christmas trees and decorating it. Okay, that's what the Bible says. Learn out the way of the heathen. Learn out the way of the unbeliever. Okay, so now we know that Christmas has nothing to do with Christ. Has nothing to do with the Most High. And some people are going to say, "Well, Mark, it's all about your intentions." Okay, so what about you celebrating Halloween? You 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 dress up like Satan, right? You, or you dress up like any type of costume. It doesn't have to be a saint. Okay. Uh, and you say, oh, it's just about my intentions, or I'm just doing it for the family. You really think God's gonna like? Come on, guys. Come on. If you know the truth, you don't want to. You don't want to be given over to a reprobate of mind. Okay. That, that's uh, to me. That's like a reprobate of mind. If you know, if you know something to do better, and you do it not, and you make excuses to justify something that you know is satanic, that you know is linked to pagan roots, it's no good. Okay. Next one up is Valentine's Day. Okay. This is also linked to paganism, guys. This is also linked to paganism. And um, so before I link, uh, post up this picture, okay, so in Valentine's Day, guys, that's a day of fornication. That's a day of adultery, okay? You have a lot of people who, you have a lot of women who, who get in their feelings because they have no Valentines, not even knowing that they're not even married. So while, if you have no husband or no wife, why do you care about Valentine's Day? It shouldn't, you know, but you see, 
it's because they program people because they see everyone else social media is you know they got a man they got their flowers you know now they feel left out but that's a day where a lot of people are fornicating a lot of people are you know committing adultery and actually if you look at the origins of valentine's day um it actually just disappeared for whatever reason okay valentine's day was um is actually a pagan holiday called leper. Hopefully, I'm saying this right. Leprosia. Uh, L u p e r c a l i a. If you want to look that up. Uh, Leprosia. Hopefully, I'm saying that right. Okay. The holiday celebrates fertility. Okay. Notice how Easter celebrates fertility. Like a lot of these pagan stuff is all linked to sex and fertility. The world we live in in America and Babylon, sex is always being promoted. Okay. Men would strip naked and sacrifice a goat and a dog. Okay, and they would, they would, they would, you know, once again have sex with people on a. Uh, uh, I don't want to trigger any. I don't want to actually say the R A P actually, but, um, you know, they would force people to have uh, intercourse. Okay, it, it's a lot. It's linked to. It's it's all about fornicating. That's mostly what the day is about. What do you see in today's age, guys? People fornicating. And like I said, guys, it's all linked to celebrate uh, worshiping the god uh, Lu Lupercia. I think it's the female god, the god of fertility. Okay. Next up is Thanksgiving. This is kind of self-explanatory, but I remember there was days where I would celebrate Thanksgiving. Guys, what did they do on Thanksgiving? They celebrated mass murder, a mass genocide of people, of innocent people. And we all get together, guys, to eat in the table to, with our family to celebrate a day where they were murdering and killing innocent people. Um, and I'm, I'm mad that I, I used to do this. I used to celebrate Thanksgiving. It's just like, what? It makes no sense, okay? And see, a lot of people know this. Like, I know people who know this, but they still celebrate it. It's just, just, like, once I came to that knowledge, guys, I don't want to eat no dinner. I don't want to celebrate uh, the days of, you know, innocent thousands or maybe even millions of people dying. You know, innocent people. That's what they were doing. That's what the celebration of Thanksgiving is, man. All right, next one up is Mother's Day and Father's Day. And I know some people might be confused. Well, Mark, Mother's Day and Father's Day, you know, that's a good thing. Yes, there's nothing wrong with about honoring your father, your mother and father, but that should be every single day, okay? That's like what the scripture says. The scripture says in Ephesians chapter, uh, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 2 to 3, it says, Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, and thou may live long on the earth, okay? So that should be an everyday thing. That's a commandment from God, okay? One of the Ten Commandments from God honoring your father and mother. It's not just one day of the year. You should be, you know, the same day y'all take selfies and pictures with your father and mother, and you know, one day you love them out of the year, that should be an every single day thing. That's the issue with Father's Day and Mother's Day. That should be an every single day thing. That's still a commandment from God to honor your father and mother. So it shouldn't just be one day, okay? You see a lot You see a lot of people who are fake, man. They they, they take pictures of their mom and mother, they know, happy is Mother's Day, they have the flowers, but on the other's day, they're not really doing that. It's just for social media, just for clout. So don't be fooled, guys. Honor your father and mother every single day so it may be well with you and you may live long on the earth, okay? So I hope you guys learned something in this video. These are the most highest holy days, and these are Satan's pagan holidays, okay? Hope you guys learn. Remember, be holy, be set apart, even as I am set apart. It's not be religious for I am religious. Be holy, be set apart. For I am holy. I love you guys so much. If you have already, make sure you guys smash the like button. Share this video on all social media platforms. Pagan season is upon us. And subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'm out. Peace.